So I just got back from a screening of X-Men Days of Future Past. It's like 2 in the morning right now. Had a great fucking time, but the highlight of my night, I got recognized for the first time. This dude's name is Carlos, and I had to take a picture with him. He didn't ask me for a picture, I just wanted a picture with him. What's up, Carlos? How you doing, man? I think he's like 15 or something. Hope you get a lot of pussy one day, my friend. X-Men Days of Future Fucking Past. This film was absolutely incredible. Without a doubt, this is my most favorite movie of the year so far. So much to talk about, let's get into this. One of the first things I found incredibly impressive about this film is that it's the biggest ensemble piece of an X-Men movie yet. Yeah, that's the right choice of words. But somehow they managed to take all these characters and make everything so well balanced. It's a character-driven sci-fi action drama. It's got all these different genres in it. It's so fucking cool. And yeah, some obvious stuff. The visual effects is absolutely great. The action is dynamite. They even amplified the mutant powers to like another level. They introduced new characters with great powers. They took familiar characters and made their powers even cooler. Like every power, I was like, I want that power. I want that power. I want that power. Austin Powers. Really, by the way, yeah. I guess the main antagonist of this film is the Sentinels. Not that film starring Michael Douglas and Jack Bauer. Horrible movie, by the way. These are giant robots designed to specifically hunt down mutants and annihilate them. When I first saw the pictures of them, I'll admit, I was concerned. I was like, uh, they don't look that scary. But I can honestly tell you, these guys terrify me at times. They are a legitimate threat to these super beings. Like, whenever they were around, I was worried one of the characters might get killed off. And in an X-Men movie, you don't really have have that concern, but in this, you're like, oh, fucking robots. Robots are gonna destroy us. I know it, man. Technology is the enemy. We gotta destroy everything. Everything. There's one thing movies have taught me, it's that technology is evil. Fuck Facebook. But if you have a Facebook, like the Real Rejects page. <coughs> But like I said, the core of this film is really its characters. There's so many of them. This film doesn't feel bombarded though. They have the right amount of characterization for each of them. They even develop them even further. You actually give a shit about like most of them. Not all of them. Who really cares about Bishop in this movie? Hugh Jackoff as Wolverine. Do you ever get worried that sometimes when Wolverine's jacking off, one of his claws might come out and accidentally cut his penis? Period. But he would heal right away. I mean, what can you really say about Hugh Jackman as Wolverine? This guy is rock solid. Or should I say, metal solid. <laughs> I don't even know if that works. He wasn't the tough asshole that we're used to seeing him as. I mean, sure, he's got some of that too. And, you know, coming off of the Wolverine, this character depiction of him might feel a little bit, you know, less. But still, he's fucking great. This is not a Wolverine and Ensemble movie. He is part of the Ensemble. Love you, Jackman. You see his ass in this one, man. Can I see Wolverine's ass? He's got a great fucking ass. I do think so. I lick that butthole. And I wouldn't say this is a flaw, but I would have liked to see Wolverine use some of his adamantium claws at one point in this movie. It's bone claws the entire time. Still cool, but would have preferred a little bit of adamantium. You think he has a bone claw that comes out of his penis? What about with the adamantium? Shh, it's like the fucking alien. <laughs> thing, but with his penis. James McAvoy returning as young Charles Xavier. This time around, he's more like a drug-addicted, washed-up professor. His journey into rediscovering himself was beautifully told. I mean, sure, you know where he's gonna be by the end of the film, but still, it's it's done very well. It's a much more compelling performance than what we got from him in X-Men First Class. Fantastic, powerhouse job. James McAvoy, yeah. Hope you continue to get a lot of Scottish pussy, my friend. Michael Fassbender is young Magneto. You see Wolverine's ass, but you don't see Michael Fassbender's dick this time around. What a shame. Get it? Because he was in a movie called Shame. I thought he was great in first class, and him and McAvoy have that incredible chemistry still. Damn, dude, he was so perfect in this movie. He was menacing, he was badass, at times you kind of feared him. Everything they did with his character this time around was absolutely gripping. This is the best portrayal I've seen of Magneto yet. So Michael Fassbender, he's so hot, man. Damn, he's sexy. Dude, after seeing his dick in Shame, let's just say I got an erection that is Magneto'd to his... I don't know. It's late, guys. It's late. But honestly, my favorite character has to be Evan Peters as Quicksilver. The dude gets like 20 to 30 minutes of screen time. By far, he's the most enjoyable character out of this film. He's cocky, yet silly. He's funny, but he's just ultra badass. Evan Peters was perfectly cast for this role. You just want to be this guy. The way they captured his powers was just like... Oh shit. Oh my god. 
it was awesome. I've seen gangbang porn before. I've seen like up to where there's like 20 guys and one girl. And I think Quicksilver could be all 20 guys and satisfy the woman. Jennifer Lawrence has Mystique. I don't know why, but I am really attracted to Mystique. I'm not talking about Jennifer Lawrence or Rebecca Romaine Stamos when they're looking like humans. I'm talking about Mystique all blue and shit. Like she is flexible as fuck. There's one point where she's holding her foot up against a guy's throat to choke him out and it's, she's like doing like a sidekick with it. Ugh, dude, oh. The sex that was running through my mind. I want to get blue balls, if you know what I mean. But here's where I'm sure I'm going to get shit from people. I love Jennifer Lawrence. I think she's one of the best actresses we have around. But there's something about her as Mystique that I never quite fully bought. Even in first class, I thought she did a better job in this one. But for some reason, whenever she talks, I'm like, eh really buying it. But still, she's hot. And uh, yeah, Jennifer Lawrence, even without looking like Mystique. <sighs> Bitch, get the hell out of my bed. I don't want to have a relationship with you. Then you get awesome returning small performances. Hot ass lesbian Ellen Page is back. Why are you Gay. I thought we could be something special. She's back at Shadow Cat. Apparently, Shadow Cat has this like time traveling ability to transport someone's conscious into the past. Don't know where she got that power from, but apparently she can do it. She's great, super cute. God, why are you gay? Ian McKellen and Patrick Stewart reprise their roles as the old guys. I love seeing them together again, especially in this film, because you get to compare like young Magneto and Xavier with old Magneto and Xavier. You get to see the different kind of chemistry and the performances and stuff. It's really fucking neat, really cool. It's just Ian Kellen doesn't get any signature like yelling lines like he normally does. They said they wish to cure us, but I say we are the cure. I am Charles Xavier. I think they both sound the same. And yeah, there's a bunch of super badass mutants I've never heard of before. But just know this, they are badass, they are awesome. It's one Asian chick, super cute Asian chick. Does like this thing where it's like kind of teleporting, but yeah, yeah I don't quite know how to describe it. It's like a spark that goes off. It's, it's really neat. If you watch the movie, you'll know what I'm talking about. Peter Dinklage was great as Trask. This guy is awesome at playing midgets. His name's Peter Dinklage. Like, his name is small penis in a lot of ways. I like how they didn't make him, like, evil. There's actual reason and understanding behind his philosophies. This guy doesn't think he's a bad guy. He literally believes he's doing something good for America. So the performance of Peter Dinklage just really did a great job, man. Midgets have never been more compelling since Willow. There's one flaw for sure that I thought was they never explain how the fuck Charles Xavier is back from the dead. You know, like, I'm sure some people actually know, like, they, I'm, I'm sure some of you guys are going to tell me why. But still, it's like, how I didn't clear it up. Please? Last I saw, you were just disintegrating into a bunch of pieces. Like, what, what happened? How are you alive, Captain Picard? But at the same time, we didn't really need it for this story, so whatever. Having Brian Singer back in the director's seat is awesome. I hope he did not molest that kid. Don't have a joke here. Just really hoped he, he didn't do that. Simon Kinberg's script was great. They knew how to capture the drama very well, tell a great character-driven story. It had just the right amount of menace. I mean, cutting back between 1973 and the apocalyptic future is kind of a difficult task, but it blended well. Well together in this film. By the way, the way they told the story of the future, that was pretty scary, man. I, I was like, this is a fucked up future for sure. And I fight side by side with the mutants. You know, it's kind of like you're cooler if you fight side by side with the mutants. Like if you live in California and you don't like gay people, you were hated. That's why I like gays, because I want to fit in with the rest of the crowd. No, gay people are cool. Got no problems with gay people. Except for you, Ellen Page. Change. I used to say this all the time in my reviews. Haven't said it in a while. I usually say I'll suck someone's dick in a film, but Here's what I gotta say this time around. I would totally suck everyone's dick that was involved with this film. Let me get straight to the point here. All in all, I gotta say X-Men Days of Future Past got it super duper motherfucker Ryan the right. Alright guys, thanks for checking out my review for X-Men Days of Future Past. Why don't you go ahead, scroll that comment box below, and tell me what would be the greatest mutant power to use while having sex. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, Ha. They said YouTubers should, you know, go out there and interact with their fans more, so I got all this shit now. And I want to throw it out there, doing a spoiler review with hot-ass Lauren Gaw. Oh my god, I would love to make her gaw um something, if you know what I mean. I hope she doesn't watch this review. <laughs> Last but not least, if you want to get updated every time one of my reviews or videos is out, go and click on this button about my dick to subscribe. That's right, the dick. Let me tell you something about this little X-Man. He has some awesome powers that have satisfied many ladies in the past, but he has a dark future ahead of him. Black girls.